social cleansing. Social housing, not social cleansing. Social housing. Social housing. Okay. Can we all try and stay on the pavement? Save, save! Okay, so on this side we will have a few speeches in addition to the one that I've just read out by Absana Begum, MP for Poplar and Limehouse. Okay, keeping in mind the local MP is not anywhere to be seen here today. Shame on Shame on Get rid of Get Okay, so the first speech right now will be delivered by Mr. Asmal Hussein. Yeah. Okay, so the first one will be by local resident Mariam Goodrich, who lives here on Woodsea Street. has been a long-term resident on Woodsea Street and has been taken, ha having taken on the derelict house in 1981. Mariam, where are you? Yes. Yeah, Mariam. So, without further ado, I will hand you over to resident Mariam Goodrich from Woodsea Street. Welcome to Brick Lane, I'm, but I can see a number of faces that I know recognise already. So I just won't take long. What I want to ex try to explain to you is the residents' concern about the detrimental effect that the development will have on Woodsea Street in particular, but also the area as a whole. My husband and I have lived in Woodsea Street since 1980. When we arrived, the house was completely derelict and we had to repair it and do it up. We raised our children there. Our children went to local schools. We are local residents and we are a part of the community and have got to love it over the years. When we moved in, my father in particular, who was born and bred in Hackney, thought we were mad. He was bombed out of his Hackney house in the war and was relocated to Essex. He couldn't understand why we wanted to live in Brick Lane. But over the years, he and everybody else we know have got to understand why. Save, save, save Brick, Brick Lane! Save, 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 save Brick, Brick Lane! Lane. Lane is a very vibrant, culturally diverse place and it is a great place to live and work in. When I arrived in Brick Lane, I was a nurse working in the NH local NHS. My husband is a carpenter and joiner. He has a small workshop in Hackney and has spent many years uh, refurbishing a number of the houses in this area. The area is important to us and everybody who lives in the street, but it's also important to the local families and the local community who live in the surrounding areas. The social housing estate at the end of this road, the residents in that estate were not consulted about this development. The impacts that it will have are not just about Woodley Street, they are about Brick Lane, Bitterfields and the whole neighbourhood. But just to focus on Woodsea Street for a moment, we have a small terrace. Virtually every single window in the terrace will be affected by a loss of light. For most of us, it will be about 40%. Imagine closing your eyes by 40% and imagine what the effect that will be to you. Number six, Woodsea Street, which is owned by a local Bengali family, is about to lose its light by up to 60 percent. The council, 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 the the council, the planners seem to think that this is acceptable because somehow we have a claim in civil law, not planning law, to compensation. That was what we were told at the meeting. From our perspective, the planners are there to protect 
the residential immunity of residents and also local businesses. We will suffer also from the extension of the nighttime economy into our little street. We will have lights until 2 o'clock in the morning, shops and restaurants open until 11 o'clock at night, with people discharging onto the street. Shame on you! And next week, Shame on you! Shame on you! The planners or the developer expects an extra 1,200 people an hour to walk along that internal street. When they get to the end of that internal street, where will they go? Have you ever seen there are no, the planners and the developer have not chosen to use the whole estate to plan for proper exits. The people, 1,200 an hour, will discharge into the end of Woodsy Street. They will then... Shame on you, the loaves. They will then disperse into the area generally. So, for example, Allen Gardens, which is our only true public space in this area, is already under huge pressure. With an extra 1,200 people an hour coming through this area in, in the future, the gardens, which are virtually a no-go area to local families, and children because of the antisocial behavior, alcohol and drugs that you see visibly in the gardens on the weekends in particular and in the evenings. The local residents and their children, there are two schools in Buxton Street. They, there are young people in this community. They shouldn't be exposed to the level of risk that is apparent by the nighttime economy. People talk about Brick Lane and Spitalfields as being an iconic area. I think iconic is a label that gets attached to all sorts of fashions. But to me, iconic means that it's important for a reason. And the things that I think are important about Brick Lane and Spitalfields it's the fact that it's a multicultural area. It is historically a multicultural area that has welcomed visitors and encouraged them to stay. It's not just about survival, it's about surviving and thriving. People should surviving be given... Surviving and thriving! Surviving and thriving! People should be given the opportunity to live and work in the area that they were brought up in. This is not happening to local, for local residents. We would urge you, above anything else, to make your views felt. The planners are currently, do not regard the 800 Tower of Hamlets residents who have registered a concern, nor the 7,000 other residents of London and elsewhere who have registered a concern as important at all. Please make your views known. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you very much. Okay, our next speaker is Dan Cruikshank from Spitterfields Trust, and he is right here next to me. Dan is an art historian, author, and presenter with a special interest in the history of architecture. He is a trustee of Spitterfields Trust. For years, Dan and the Trust have battled against planners. As a result, the Trust can claim to have preserved much of the area around Brick Lane from destruction. A massive applaud for Dan Cruikshank, please. Thank you. I will be brief. I'm speaking slogans because it's PAE equipment is um, slightly limited. And I've lived in Spitalfields uh, from the uh, late 1970s, have documented the area, its life, its architecture, from the late 1960s, walking, looking, and learning. Um, so the trust has been going for 40 years, and we have fought for the buildings and for the people and for the community of Spitalfields, East London, and elsewhere in the country, in fact. For 300 years, until it closed in 1989, Truman's Brewery was, in a sense, the heart of Spitalfields, and it remains, in its sight at least, the heart. More of that in a moment. When the brewery started in the late 17th century, it was uh, Benjamin, uh, Joseph Truman first and his son Benjamin, um, made it into a, a mighty business. But you've got to bear one thing in mind from the beginning. 
In the 18th century, beer was venerated. It was seen as healthy, which is uh, potentially good for uh, the people of London, as opposed to gin and such things as that. So brewing was a goodly, godly business, which was suitable being in the heart of this Calvinistic Huguenot area as it was in the late 17th, early 18th century. The brewery prospered. It got bigger and bigger, made more and more beer, more and more money, but those brewers, the Trumans, and then a man called Sampson Hambry, and then a chap called Buxton, were godly, good-fearing men. God -fearing men. They did not put profits first. They made profits, but they had a great regard for the people of the area. There was much poverty here in the late 18th, early 19th century, as the silk industry collapsed. Uh, Truman's and particularly Buxton supported local soup kitchens. You can still see their works down here. At number 116 is a date, 1797. That was the headquarters of the Layling Society, giving soup to the poor of the area. Buxton went on, uh, became an MP in 1818, and he, um, took over the campaign in the House of Parliament from William Wilberforce to outlaw slavery. He was a critical force in bringing equality to the British Empire and emancipation to the slaves. These men were giants in the late 18th, early 19th century. The brewery was a stage for their good works. They did not, I say, repeat myself, put profits first. But indeed, Hatton Buxton entertained the Prime Minister and Cabinet in the brewery in 1831 to lobby to push his causes a bit for poverty and against the slave trade. He served them beef and porter. Incredible. This, this, this was the character of Truman's brewery. That's why I say it was central to the life of Spitalfields and central still. Um, what is it? The trust has been very disturbed by the, the, the current proposals because, of course, I say this scheme's at the heart of Spitalfields, the site's at the heart of Spitalfields. We must make no mistake about it. What happens here will determine the future of Spitalfields, for good or for ill. It's a large and important site. Much good could be done to enhance and protect the much-loved historic character of this area, the character that people come from all over the world to enjoy, that is characterized by a mixture of uses, a mixture of people, tolerant appreciation. People live and work here. Living is important. And, then, and, and also what's important is the quality of the architecture. Much of it is not that ancient, but there is a harmony and a, and, and a diversity and a beauty and a poetry in the area. What we do not want to lose is the society. What we do not want to lose is the mixture of uses. We do not want to uh, lose Spitalfields being an opportunity for people starting in life looking for cheap, a reasonable priced accommodation or reasonably priced workspaces. This brewery site can give all those things, or we can deny it. It can become, of course, an adjunct to the city, an adjunct to West End shopping. We don't want that in Spitalfields. We are special because of our mix of uses, our mix of communities, and, the, and a sense of, of toleration uh, and, 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 and uh, a mutual support. So, to conclude, <laughs> the Trust, with others, has been involved in uh, putting forward um, a community alternative scheme, which you can see today in 25 Princeton Street, a wonderful house of 1705, by the way. And in, in, on display is, our, is a scheme forged by the Trust and, 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 and other people to show a vision of what things could be, and also to feed into the scheme the opinion of the local community. The people who live and work here are the most important people, are they not, in the future of a city, in the future of a life. So I say, this is a, a most important battle, but at stake is the future of Spitalfield itself as a place to live and to work. Thank you. Asmal has run restaurants on Brick Lane for over 20 years. 
He is vice chair of the Brick Lane. Oh, he is the secretary of the Brick Lane Restaurateurs Restaurant Association. He is a vocal advocate for the conservation and culture of Brick Lane. I'm going to hand it over to you, Asmal. Big applause for Mr. Asmal Hussein. My name is Asmal Hussein. I own not only one restaurant, I own many restaurants in Brick Lane. I, I own many restaurants in Brickline, and I'm, uh, the, I'm, a I'm a landlord of your restaurant also. But one thing, you know, where if any, anywhere a Tesco open, all small restaurants, all small uh, um, things are gone. Same as if they open like this, there will be no small restaurant. Nothing will be left. They will suck everything like this. So we have to be careful for the small entities, not big industry and this one every every time council says lot of people coming and if they open this one what happened it will be flow of people and this area is not only commercial it is both for people living and working so we have to say so we have to we have to have uh, thinking like this is it a, a conservation area and if you, what is mean conversion area is, we have to hold as it is. But if it comes modern industry, modern buildings, so it does not look like um, conservation. So we have to hold as it is, and I'm campaigning for it, and I will be with you anytime, anywhere you like. Thank you so much for your support. Last but not least, we have Tasneema Uddin from Nijar Manush. Right, so without further ado, I will hand it over to her. Tasneema Uddin, everyone. Hey all, on behalf of Nijar Manush and all the other organizations involved, we want to thank you for coming out. Today, Today, we show the Truman Brewery and the council that we will not stop until this development is rejected and replaced. The council, the choice before us could not be more stark. 98.9% .9 of the public consultation opposed the development plan that the council is seeking to put through. Truman Brewery, shame on Today we stand for the 7,000 and more people who condemned the Truman Brewery proposal as an assault on Brick Lane's future and past. We stand for the local residents struggling against chronic indifference by the council and creeping displacement by the city.